thank you for blessing us already this morning, God. And I pray, God, that as we round out this series, as we round out this run series, looking at the values that you have installed, the DNA that you have put in to this church, Lord Jesus. I, I ask you that you would speak to us, Lord Jesus. You'd continue to, to, to speak to us, Lord God, that you'd touch us, that we'd feel your presence, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that not one not one single one of us would leave this hall without feeling your presence, Lord God, without knowing that they've met with the risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we are closing out this series, Run, and we have, we, we've started off with Run in Grace and Truth. Where is it? It's there. Run in Grace and Truth. Actually, we're a church where we want to, everything we do on a Sunday, the things that we do throughout the week, actually we want to be a church that's based on God's truth. And actually that, that filters into how we live our own lives. That we, I want you guys, we want you guys to live your lives, to live your day-to-day life from Monday to Sunday in a way that you feel that, that you know the Bible is telling you that's how we should live our lives. We want to be a church that, that runs, that runs in his presence. That we don't just do things in our own power, but we do, do, do things empowered by the Holy Spirit. That he is here, he is real, he is acting. And so therefore on Sundays, it's great, it was great this morning that we had two prophetic words which lined up a, 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 with, with one another. And we were able to heal, we were able to pray. Um, and I encourage you, if you prayed for someone, whether that was then or whether that was in, in the break, I encourage you to keep praying for them throughout the week. Because quite often we can feel like God's victory in something, and then we step back into it. And we feel like, oh, this is awful again. Actually, pray. Pray for their protection. Pray for their blessing uh, this week as you go. You know, pr- um, and actually, because... We see, as we read scripture, we see God working, don't we? If you read the book of Acts, the majority of the time God is working, it's not in a church service. And that's because most of our lives aren't a church service. We're here for a couple of hours on a Sunday. The rest of the week, God is still working. So we want to see, and I love hearing stories of how God's breaking in, whether that's, whether that's through praying for someone, whether that's God giving us a word for someone on the street, or whether that's someone who we've been praying for for ages, who's been really annoying, being really against us and horrid, them having a complete change of heart all of a sudden. It's, we wanna, we're praying for God to move to work. You know, we, we're praying. We want to run for others, as Andy bought the other week. We want to be a church that serves one another, uses our gifts and talents to serve the church around us, that uses those gifts and talents to serve the world around us. We want to run, as we looked at last week, pointing to Jesus, proclaiming that he is the Savior, that he is the Lord, that he is the one that we can find hope in. And finally today, we're going to, we're going to, we want to run together. Not as individuals, but we want, we want to run together as an authentic community. So I'm going to read our scripture for this, this, this topic and, uh, and get, in it, get into it from there. So it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I just want to pick up on that first, first little line in that, in that um, piece of scripture. It says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And what that's doing is that's harking back to, we're, this, is verse, this is chapter 12, verse 1. Now, before chapter 12, there was obviously chapter 11. And the writer of the Hebrews in chapter 11, if you read it, it's a great chapter where he just goes through saint after saint after saint in the Old Testament, starting with Abel, Abraham, Sarah, Moses. Uh, he, goes through, he goes through them all, all the, all the characters that you might be able to remember uh, from the Old Testament and, and he, 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 what he's saying is, is look back at these people. Look back at these, these, these former contestants, these former runners, these former racers who have run their race before you. And look what they declare. Look what they declare. And above all, they declare God is good. God is faithful. Even when we were unfaithful, he is still and is 
faithful. They testify to the fact that if you run, if you endure, as this, this um, paragraph says, if you endure with Christ, it's worth it. It's worth it. The highs and the lows, the mountaintops like we talked about last week, and the valley lows where things seem awful. He is with us, and it is worth it. And they, 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 they cry to us, we finished our race. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to run. And so we must run. And we must run. But then he, he moves us on. He doesn't just leave us there to gaze back at a bunch of dead saints. Actually, he moves our eyes. He says, what does he do? He says, fix your eyes, therefore, on Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. You see, Jesus, Jesus is the only one who is able to equip us. He is the only one who fully can equip us with all the necessary qualities to endure, to run this race, to run this race as we've been called to run, to run this race, run this life as we've been called to through the mountain highs and valley lows. You see, he does that. He does that through three primary ways. He does that by, first off, cheering for you. Do you know Jesus cheers for you? Jesus cheering for you. A great, wonderful um, uh, scripture to, get, um, to memorize is Zeph- Zephaniah 3, 17, where he says, um, you know, the Lord sings over you. The Lord sings over you. Jesus is cheering over you. And actually, you may think, well, but I've been pretty rubbish this week. I've made, a, I've made some foolish mistakes. Jesus still sings over you. If you're finding that hard to believe, if you go back and look at Hebrews 11, and then you go to what we're meant to do is read those stories and say, as the writer of Hebrews tells us about these great saints of old, you're meant to go back to Genesis, Exodus, go back to Kings and Judges, and actually read about these guys. And and when when you do, you you might be a bit puzzled, because it says things like this. It 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 tells us how amazing Sarah was. Actually, you read the story of Sarah, and you see, God says you're going to have a child. And what's Sarah's response? She laughs. She laughs. Not, not with joy. She laughs like, <laughs> like that's ever going to happen. Have you seen how old I am? And what does the, what does, how does God recall her story? By faith, she conceived. Because she considered him faithful. David. David's in there. When you think of David, what do you think of? Maybe David and Goliath? Or what's the next kind of story that you think of? Anyone? Bathsheba. You know, him, him, him sleeping with his friend's wife, and then to cover it up, he kills his friend. He, adulterer and a murderer. What does God say about David? He's a man who ran after my own heart. I mean, one of the most puzzling ones in there is Samson. Have you read Judges? You read Judges, you read about Samson. Okay, this, this is a guy who was born when he was in his mother's womb. It was prophesied over him that he would be, he would be a deliverer for Israel from the, the Philistines. I mean, this guy had great things prophesied over him. But you read his life. He was arrogant. He was a womanizer. He was a drunk. He couldn't care two hoots really what God, what, what God said. But what does God say about him? He said, through faith. He conquered kingdoms and administered justice. I mean, God is good. God is good. And he tells us the story of us us just the same. Because one day, all the dross, all the sin, all the mess of our lives, it will be burnt up. It will be burnt up. And what will be left is the stuff that we did in faith for Jesus. You see, he will never stop cheering you on. He will never stop cheering you on through the good times and the bad times. And you feel like, I don't deserve it. No, you don't. That's grace. That is grace. You can never deserve it. But he loves to shower his grace over you. Number two, he gives us, and we talked about this in week two, he gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, the Spirit of God gives us power to love and self-control. You see, we, 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 he gives us the Holy Spirit to run our race with endurance. And we're not designed to run the race on our own, just gritting our teeth. 
but to be filled. And not once, but to keep being filled on and on and on and on. And thirdly, thirdly, which brings us to this morning, to run our race well, he gives us the church. He gives us the church to run with during the valleys, over the mountains. He gives us the church. Genesis 2, 18, familiar verse, says, it is not good for man to be alone. We weren't created to live on our own. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10 says, two are better than one. One, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other one up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. We are designed to run in teams, run together, run with the church. You see, Jesus helps us by cheering us on, by, by, by giving us his spirit, but also by giving us each other. It is not an accident that you're here. He gives us each other. He gives us each other. You see, see being, being part of the church isn't an optional extra. Actually, it's just like being filled with the Spirit. Okay, God is good and God is gracious and God gives us free will. So he doesn't force us to be filled with the Spirit. He doesn't force you to have friends and to be in a, a loving, Bible-believing church. But it doesn't mean we weren't designed to do it. You are designed to be in a church that loves you, that loves Jesus. So let me ask you, what is the church? What is the church? Because it's not a beautiful building. I mean, I'd love a massive, beautiful building. I mean, this is great, but, you know, I'd, but the church isn't a beautiful, isn't, isn't a massive, beautiful building. Jesus is the church. It's like a light there to display his goodness. It's like a flock of sheep. Stupid sometimes, but um, does, does what um, follows Jesus, follows the good shepherd. It's like a temple built up of bricks and mortar and wood and precious stones and fabrics coming together to make an amazing, awesome, awesome structure. But actually, what the Bible writers love to talk about when they talk about the church is to say the church is family. The church is family. You see, a family is a place where you can be known and where you know. It was, it was great. It was brilliant. You know, it was wonderful with those, those words of knowledge that came this morning. It gave us a chance to pray for one. It was great to be able to, 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 be able to pray for, for brothers and sisters during the break. You know, we, we didn't plan that. We didn't orchestrate that. That's the beauty of family. Okay? It can, it, it, things just happen and you deal with it in the moment, don't you? Messy stuff happens. I was listening to Mike Pilavachi the other day, and he was talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And he said, basically, his approach to the gift, gifts of the Spirit are, um, yes, they can be messy, but I'd rather be in a nursery where things are messy and things, things sometimes you don't expect to happen than a graveyard where everything's nice and tidy and everything's dead. And that's the same, isn't it? We want, family is messy, Family is messy. If you want a, if you want a, 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 a clean, you know, clean house, don't have anyone in it. But actually, that's not, you know, you know this, don't you? You get, you get, you get, you get your house cleaned, or you clean, you spend all day cleaning your house, and the kids come home and we're like, what did I spend all day doing? But actually, we're designed to live in community. We're designed to live as family, to live with people who know you, who know the good of you, who know the bad of you, who know the ugly of you. I love seeing some nods over there of people who obviously make mess, I'm going to say. Or, um, but uh, uh, yeah, that, that's what happens when we live in family. People know us. You see, the church isn't like a family. You know, it's like it's like, like, like it's like a temple. The church is a family. See, the Bible writers describe us as literally having God the Father, having Jesus, our literal big brother, being brothers and sisters to one another, being adopted into his family. It's how, how they write it. It's how we're described because it's how we are. It's how we are. It's how the church identified itself. You know, so that means that, that, that just like families, when, when, when there's things to celebrate, 
when there's birthdays, when there's, there's examination passes, when there's, there's special days, families get together and they celebrate. And the same in the church, when those things happen, when, 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 when you get a breakthrough, when you get a breakthrough with your neighbors, when you get a breakthrough with, 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 with a family member who you've been praying for for years and years, we celebrate with one another. That's one of the reasons why we want to share, because we want to celebrate with one another. But it also means that when we go through the valleys, we don't hide away and hope no one realizes. Actually, that's our first instinct, what we want to do. And in families, it we don't have a choice, do we? That's what can be really hard sometimes. You know, mom, dad, brother, sister, kids, they see you when you're, when, when you're at your worst. And actually the temptation is, because we don't always like that, is that's why I, I, I wanted to put it out there this morning, but I know that we don't like it because, you know, please you know, raise your hand if you're going through a tough time. Well, I am going through a tough time, but I don't want anyone to know about it. That's what we could, you know, I, don't, I want everyone to think that I'm fine, I'm okay. No, actually, in a family, we don't hide. We don't hide, but we let others in. You see, I don't, uh, uh, one of the true kind of pictures, one of great or great pictures of family and kind of on this, this run theme. Uh, if you've seen the, the Bramley brothers, um, I can't remember where they were. But there's this, there's this, this, what, there's this, there's this event that the Bramley brothers, they were, that they are triathletes. And coming to the end of one of this race. Who's the younger? Jonathan. Okay, so John, Jonathan is leading the triathlon. He is literally 100 y- yards from the finish line. And if you listen to the commentary, they're, they're saying, oh dear, oh dear. Because he, he, stop, he, he always just stops running. And you can just see all the energy in every single cell of his body has just gone. And he goes from running to like barely standing up, and he's literally he's just about to fall over when his brother, Alistair, who's in second place, comes by, and Alistair doesn't keep running. I mean, he can see the finish line. He doesn't keep running. He grabs his brother, puts his arm under him, and literally carries him. At this moment, this, this Australian, who's in third, goes past them um, and gets in wins, but actually... What everyone was talking about, the fact that his brother stopped, grabbed him, and it's amazing, as you see it, I mean, he grabs him, and he literally kind of drops him, or throws him, over, over the finish line, so that his brother finishes before him. You see, that's what family is, that's what church is to be. We see each other at our lowest, and we get in the race, and we carry one another when need be. We carry one another you see, you see that, that's what, that's, that's what uh, you know, many of you can testify to this, of, of have going through valleys and letting people see, and brothers and sisters jumping in the race and being there with you, carrying you over the line. You know, I, we, we, had, we had this, you know, a, a very easy one is Andy. Andy was up the other week, okay? I, I've, shared, I've shared before, you know, how you know, two years ago, well, over two years ago now, we, I was really struggling. I was wanting to give up. I was wanting to throw everything away, really. I was like, God, what are you doing? And then Andy came along. Now, Andy lives 200 and something miles away. So he wasn't physically allowed, able to get his arm around me and carry me. But he came along with encouragement. You can do it. What's God got for you? What's God said over your life? Right then. You know, he's good. He's faithful. And he just came with those words. And we can do that for one another, can't we? You may not physically be able to pay for someone. You know, we, we, we've been asking this morning, you can get alongside some six-year-olds and, and support them. You know, you may, you, you may be able to do that, but you may not be able to physically get alongside someone or pay, pay for something or, or carry them, but you can encourage them. You can encourage them. It says, you know, in this series, it's not about just hearing what we say. It's not about you sitting there and going, okay, I like the sound of this church. I think I can sit, I can sit down through a half an hour or so preach every, every Sunday. No, this is about hearing. And as Jesus says, blessed are those who hear the word and obey it. So how can we, how can we listen? How can we obey God's words? 
See, God's family is a place where we're to be real, where we can encourage one another, where we can help one another, but also, and for some of us, this is really hard, receive encouragement and receive help. You see, so I've got five little challenges for us all just to think through and to pray over. So at the end of each one, I'm going to say a little prayer, and I want, I want you to, to, to pray it with me, okay? Uh, I'm not going to put it up on the screen or anything like that. I'm just going to ask you to, to, to amen it and actually mean it. So, challenge one. Challenge one. How are you, connected are you to your family? How connected are you to your church church family? See, we need people to run alongside. And, and Sundays isn't enough. Sundays isn't enough. You see, so... Because if we really want, even though we, that's, you know, we do these things, we do tea and coffee, we do lunches, but actually to really know someone, so you need to build trust. You know, so, so I, I challenge you, because actually this, 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 can be, this, this, this can be a sacrifice. You see, so can you, can you get yourself? to some of the things that we put on. We do, we do a multiple um, number of small groups during the week in month. We have home group, which is on a Wednesday every week. We have women's group, which is monthly. We have men's group, which is monthly. Um, we have a pub quiz, which is, which is um, uh, weekly on a Thursday. Can you, can you get to any of these? Because it's about opening up and spending time with people. If you can't get to any of these, or even if you can, and you're thinking, actually, I've got another way that someone can connect, why don't you let me know? Well, let me know. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so can, can you, but, but it's going to, that can be sacrificial. Secondly, could you spend an hour of your week with someone else? Maybe having them around for dinner. Maybe that's too high bar. Maybe meeting them in a coffee shop. Maybe going on a dog walk or whatever with them. Can you, can, you, can you give up an hour of your time to connect with a brother and a sister in this church? You see, Jesus had a following of about 120 people when he, when he died on that cross. But he intentionally spent time with 12, didn't he? And actually to do that, he made sacrifices. Now, Jesus had to make really good sacrifices. And sometimes we have to make really good sacrifices. Um, sacrifices as in we're not sacrificing bad things. You know, Jesus had to sa- Jesus' sac- sacrifices were... I'm not going to heal this person or I'm not going to, I'm not going to, feed, going to feed these people because I need to spend time with these 12. I mean, that's how important it was to Jesus to connect with these 12. You see, Jesus was intentional about spending time with others because he valued family. These, he says, doesn't he? He says, these are his family, his brothers and sisters, literal blood, brothers and sisters, come. And they say, you know, come outside and meet us. And he's like, no, no, these are my family. You, we are family. So I'm going to pray that God would reveal to us maybe ways that we can connect better. Or maybe that, that things that God wants us to give up so that we can meet with one another throughout the week. So Lord Jesus, I thank you for family. Lord God, I pray that you'd help us be a church that connects, God. God, I pray that you help us to be a church that connects. Lord Jesus, like, no, no, no one is, you didn't design church to be Sunday only. God, actually, only the devil is happy with that. <laughs> only the devil is happy with that. That's not what you designed. You designed us to live in family. So, Lord God, I pray that you'd help us connect. Lord Jesus, show us other things, good things even, that we need to say no to so that we can connect in with our brothers and sisters and do life together. If there are, Lord God, give us the strength to do that. To say no to what we need to say no to and yes to what we need to say yes to. Amen. Amen. Right, next one. How can you serve your family? And we've talked about serving already, but we, we are a family. You see, and if you're a family, actually Ian's got this kind of like within the, uh, you know, he comes into our house, he calls it his kitchen. Actually, you know, fa- family, family muck in, don't they? Family muck in. So, so that, you know, if you're guests, Get served, but family muck in. That means in our household, you know, the kids do the dishwasher. The kids, you know, we we, we you know we do. When someone's ill, you take up the slack. And actually, that's how it should be amongst us. So let me ask you, you know, can you, can, how can you muck in? How can you muck in? Can you? We need we need kids workers. 
We need people to help set up. We need people to do hospitality. You know, that, that's one way we can muck in. That's what we need, where they're needed ways. But also, there's ways like, I'm just overwhelmed. Like, there's quite a few of you here who've come and you don't have a car and someone else has brought you. I mean, that's family. That's family. You know, I take my kids to football or to dancing and because they can't physically get there themselves. And sometimes people need help to belong to the family. And actually, we can do that for one another. And maybe you, you don't know anyone who needs, needs a lift or a car, but actually you've got a car and you could say, actually, I, I could give you a lift. So what if it's two minutes out my way? I, I, can, I can help by that. Or maybe there's other ways. But the Bible says, you know, we are to serve one another. So I'm going to pray now. You know, we need, like I said, we need many people. And we're praying for, for more, more service. Um, so Lord Jesus, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, I thank you for the gifts and talents that you've given. Every single one here, Lord God, I thank you for possessions that we've got. I thank you for houses. I thank you for, for cars. God, and I pray right now that you would reveal to us through your spirit ways that we can serve. Whether that's, that, that's coming here earlier on Sunday and help setting up, whether that's looking after the kids, whether that's, 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 that's learning an instrument and becoming part of the band, Lord God, whether that's, whether that's offering a lift, offering to, to give someone a meal once a week or whatever, Lord Jesus, however that is, God, stir within us. God, I thank you that you give us gifts and talents. Oh God, you also give us passions that you want us to act on. So God, I pray that you'd enable us to do that. Amen. Number three. Who in the family can you open up to? Like I said, Jesus had the 12, but actually he also had Peter, James, and John. And Peter, James, and John knew every single thing about him, didn't they? They, spent, they, saw, him, they, they saw him everywhere. I mean, if they could stay awake, they would have seen him dripping drops of blood in the garden. They saw him in anguish. And actually, this is something that we, we, need, to, we need to do. See, again, who, do you, who can you open up with? So you can't open up to everyone here. But who, which one, two people can you open up with? Say, I really struggle with this. And that takes bravery because you run the risk, don't you? You say, I really struggle with this. And they could throw it back at you. They could use it against you. That's, that's happened to me. You know, um, I'm going through therapy at the moment, and that's one of the things I bring up. Um, but actually, if that's happened to you, I'm really, really sorry. I'm really sorry if that's happened to you. If you trusted someone, you've opened up to them, and they've thrown it back at you. They've used it, used it against you. But like I said, if we turn up and just put on our plastic, smiley faces, everything's awesome... That's not church. That's not church. Like I said, only Satan is happy with us keeping all our problems to ourselves. Only he is happy. That's not how God intended us. You know, the Bible says, in the beginning, you know, the man and woman in the garden, they were naked. And that's, that's an image of the fact that they had no secrets. They knew each other completely. They knew each other's flaws. They knew, each other. they knew the good, the bad, the ugly, like I've said already. So this takes bravery. But let's, let's press in. Let's press in. Some of us might need prayer to say, actually, I've tried that before. I know it's good. But someone, they, they hurt me. So we need prayer that we'll be free from that bondage of hurt so that we can move on. But let's press in. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you. Jesus, that no matter what, we can always be honest with you, that you are always gracious. Your mercies are new every single day to us. Lord God, and I pray that you'd help us be honest. Give us a brother, a sister who we can open up to, who we can confide in, who we can tell them, actually, do you know what? I struggle with that. Do you know what? I'm having those thoughts again. And actually, that they, can, they will uplift us. They will be like, like Alistair. Alistair Brownlee, getting around our show, getting their arm under us and lifting us and carrying us and pushing us over that, that finish line. Lord God, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would be trustworthy and actually we would be gracious so that when others are, are, are vulnerable with us, we, we have the privilege of lifting them up to you. Amen. And finally, how can you grow this family? 
See, families grow. Families grow. You see, and, and maybe the Holy Spirit has been talking, the Holy Spirit's been prompting you of ways actually how you can help grow this family. Maybe, like I said before, maybe you know Christian brothers and sisters who are new to the area or have been in the area for a while but aren't in a loving community. Can you, can you do something about that? Maybe they, they've been, maybe they feel like they've been hurt by church and they're bitter against it. Maybe you could just get a couple of people around you and just say, could we pray for these people weekly? And just, just pray that God would soften their hearts. And like I said already, can you, can you offer, could you offer lifts? Could you help out in some way? You know, may, may, I don't know. But also, we are family. So if, if God comes, if you see someone and you think actually, they need help, but I can't help them, don't end there. Don't end there. We're family. So therefore, if you see someone who needs help, needs a lift, needs, some, needs serving, actually go, actually, I'm part of a bigger family here. I know someone, actually, I don't know someone. I'll just ask, could someone else do that? Because I can't, either because I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, I don't have the knowledge. That's okay. That's why we're in family, with many gifts, so that we can serve this town together. You don't need to be the answer. You don't, you're not the savior of this town, okay? Jesus is, and he uses the body to bring them to him, okay? So, so let, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for your people. God, I thank you for this, this people here, Lord God, and I thank you for, for those who you bring across our path. God, and I ask you that you'd give us, you'd give us ideas uh, of how we can help people better, that we can bring them, we can help them, we can draw them in to your family. Lord God, so, so help us. Help, give, give us people who are able to, to serve, Lord God. And where we can't serve, let, let, us, let us be able to lean on our brothers and sisters here to be able to, to ask and to carry the load, carry the load together. Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus designed us to run together. 1 Corinthians 9 says, do, not, do you not know that all run the race and all runners run to get the prize? See, we run to get the prize and we do that by running in grace and truth, filled with the Spirit, running for others, encouraging others. We do that by pointing others to Jesus and we do it together. And it says everyone who competes in the games, in the Olympic games, that uh, goes into strict training, they do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it. We run to receive a crown that will not perish but last forever. See, God's family is a place where we can encourage one another, where we can help one another, where, and where we can receive help and encouragement. You've heard that parable, haven't you? Um, I'm sure you have. You know, if you want to go fast, go alone. But actually, if you want to go far, go with others. If you want to finish the race, if you want to run the race strong, marked out before you, run with others. And, and, and I love it. If, if, you, if you watch the BBC commentary, if you go on YouTube and watch the BBC commentary of the, the Bramley Brothers run, Okay, they're, they're saying this is, the, oh no, oh no, this is, this is awful, this is awful. And then all of a sudden, this, this, the, the female commentator goes, as Alistair puts his arm around Jonathan, she goes, is that allowed? Is that allowed? Oh, we're gonna, I mean, are they, are they, is he allowed to carry him over the, over the finish line? I mean, does, does his second place count? Does it? And some of you may be thinking the same thing, you know, is it allowed that in church I can open up? Can I really be real? You know, do I have actually something to bring? Yes, you do. You know, can I be accepted? Can I help? Can I be help? Can I receive help? And the answer is yes, it's allowed. It's allowed. I've checked the rule book. It's allowed. You're allowed to receive help. You, you, and, and if you're thinking, then, but I don't have anything to bring. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And if you, if you, if you go back, if you, if you just draw yourself back and say, I, I, can't, I can't contribute, actually, not only, we, not only you miss out from getting involved, actually we are poorer for it. Clayton Carby um, writes this, Crabby writes this, this race of faith was not designed to be run alone. Unlike a marathon, we, are, we aren't in competition with those around us. We run together and are called to assist one another 
in the race. Let's run this race. Let's run it together. We are. We are family. Now, I can say that 20 more times, but I'm not. But you need to accept that and do that. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will be speaking to us right now of ways that we can join in and be family. Maybe some of you do events and you think, actually, I think of these people when I have these celebrations. Actually, think of everyone. You know, we've got a party next weekend, don't we? Actually, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a young one-year-old's birthday party. He's not like this. Um, <laughs> but actually, that's a church celebration. And there will be people here from, from this church. There will be people here from, there from other churches. There will be people who aren't in any church. And actually, we are to be family and love and care and be there for one another. So let's pray and, let's, let's, and then I'll hand over to Andrea. So Jesus... God, I thank you that the church, it's like a light. It's like a, it's like a building. It's, it's like sheep. It's like a body. But ultimately, how you describe it, you describe it as a family. We are brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, children of the Father. Uh, but you are our big brother. We have your DNA running through us. We, are, we, we have the Holy Spirit running through us. We have, we, we, we have your, your name. We, we are now, as we are saved, we are, we, we are, we are little Christians. We are, we are little Christs. We have we, we, we've taken your name, the anointed one, upon ourselves, Lord Jesus. We are now adopted into your family. Lord God, and I pray, Jesus, that these wouldn't just be words that hit the ground, that go onto solid ground, which bears no fruit, but these be root, these be words that hit soft soil that grow into our hearts and we would be like we would be a family like no other the way the world would see the world would come in amongst us and say wow there's something different and yes the holy spirit is amongst you but these people love each other like i've never seen there's there, there's so many different people there's people there's people from from blackpool there's people from the north of england there's people from the south of england there's people from from from, from, from eastern europe there's people from western europe there's people from africa there's people from asia there's people from all over and somehow you love each other just like your flesh and blood because we are lord jesus we thank you for this family we thank you for christ blackpool lord god lord god i thank you for what you're doing and what you're doing going to do more lord jesus you are so good you are our father you are our dad we praise you amen amen